Hello everybody and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today we are on a kayak adventure. We have our whole life packed away on our old town kayak. Me and the tiny boy here are headed across the lake onto a new adventure. It's gonna be an incredible day. We ran up into the mountains to escape the heat. It's the middle of July and it is hotter than two rats in a sock. So I said, hey, no better thing to do than run away from the heat, get up in the mountains to a beautiful mountain lake and go camping. And so then I thought, let's take it up another notch and let's do everything from the kayak. So my goal is to find an island out here to camp on like we did a few videos ago. And if you didn't see that one, you guys I had some great response from it. We camped on this tiny little island in the middle of this giant lake. And so you guys loved it. So I'm out to do it again, but I'm not seeing any islands. And as I remember, if I remember correctly, on this lake, there was an island. So we're going to go check it out. If not, we're going to either, one, have to sleep on the kayak. So we're going to see how well we can do just sleeping on this kayak out in the middle of the lake. Or two, we're going to try to find a super cool camp spot on the edge of this lake. And this lake in particular has a really, really, really interesting style of fishing. And that is, one, fly fishing only, and two, you do it at night. So stick around to see how that turns out. I'm really excited for this adventure. Couldn't be more beautiful of a day. And I wanna thank you all for being here. Again, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe and share this out there. Thumbs ups do these videos better than anything else. Uh, and so if you can, guys, if you like these videos, be sure to give it a thumbs up and YouTube will share it out there to more people and they can come along and, and join us all on these amazing adventures. So stick around. I cannot wait to get this underway. Let's go have some fun, everybody. I'm gonna start off the afternoon with probably some sort of woolly budger setup. I have a lot of different options and this is what I'm gonna be fishing later tonight, these big things. There's a thing called the cicada hatch out here and these things hatch in the nighttime. Uh, and then it's all top water dry fly fishing in the middle of the night. So it makes for a very, very interesting episode, uh, I think. And, and just the theory of fishing in the middle of the night, not being able to see your fly or your lure, and just hearing that fish come up to the surface and hit it, it gets me turned on every time. So I'm really excited to get that a try, but I'm gonna rig up a little bit longer later here and get a bug behind me as I troll across the lake uh, to find our campsite for the night. Let's see here, what do we want to go with? I think the olive bugger is going to be the obvious choice. Good one here. Like that. Another method for doing this could be like a sink tip or something, which I have um, actually on board here. But I'm going with I'm going with a cheater method. I'm just adding a split shot, putting it midline, and getting that bad boy back there so that a fish might come and bite it. And this is a catch and release lake too, so I have some really good stuff for a recipe tonight for food. Uh, instead of actually catching and killing fish, we're gonna have to wait for another episode to do that. But let's get this out here. Okay, let's send this bad boy back. Quite a ways here. Okay, we're fishing. Oh, there he is. Oh, I missed him. Darn it. First bite of the afternoon. All I'm doing here is I'm trolling this fly about 100 feet behind me. I went all the way down to my packing line. Uh, and then what I like to do when I'm trying to troll like this, a lot of times, especially if I'm trolling flies, is to give it a little action. I just like to give it a little bit of a tug, give that bug a little bit of a jump forward, let it fall back behind, jump forward, fall back behind, and right mid-jerk, I got nailed just a second ago. So first bite of the afternoon, things are looking up. And uh, we're almost part way, we're, we're pretty much there to where our island was supposed to be. Um, and it's not much of an island right now. Okay, we got some rollers here. As I was trolling over, I've fished this lake before and at this end of the lake was the best fishing for me. So really deep down inside, I'd like to catch a couple of fish before we go build camp. So I came to my favorite part of the lake. With a couple of different fish that are in this lake. One, there's rainbow trout, there's wild rainbows, there's wild cutthroat trout, and then there's brown trout. And brown trout is one that I've never caught on a fly rod before. So I'm really excited to give that a shot. And I really, really, really hope that we can find one tonight. Cause that would be a big monumental moment for me to catch a fish, a brown trout in particular at night one and two on the fly rod. So let's keep our fingers crossed and wish me luck, everybody. Ooh. 
Ooh, that was a nice fish. They're jumping all around us, everybody. It's so beautiful out here right now. It's the sun's starting to set. It's calming down. And I love the sounds. One of my favorite part of fishing a lake, especially when it's nice and calm, is the sounds that you hear. Off to the off to the head of the lake here, I can hear some elk calling back and forth, some cow calls mewing in the bushes. I keep seeing these giant trout jump out of the water. The sun's going down, that wind's dying down, and the stage is set for an absolutely beautiful evening. I think I'm gonna take this split shot off, get over here into this calm section and start casting around to wherever I see these fish jumping. Not sure if you guys can hear that on the mic, but those elk are calling just on the edge of the lake, just on the other side of that tree line there. I can hear them all mewing back and forth as they get up from their, their afternoon bedding to go out and start eating for the night. Hopefully the fish will be eating like the elk are tonight. Yep, there they are. I don't know if you can see this, everybody, but there's elk coming out into the lake right now. How beautiful. What a special moment here on Stay Fishy, everybody. Our first elk encounters. What an incredibly cool experience here, everybody, to be out on the head of this lake right now. And I knew I could hear these things calling earlier in the episode. I think a lot of you probably were calling BS on the sounds that you were hearing, but that it be proof. I heard an elk coming out right into the middle of the lake right now. We're just going to stay right here in position. Try not to spook this one that's come out here. This is like the herd cow. She's letting everybody know everything's okay. So I'm guessing that entire herd of elk's probably going to make their way out into the water here to play around. Such a neat experience. Well, what an incredible experience that is. If none of you out there have ever gotten to be in close quarters with elk. They are one of the most powerful, majestic, and beautiful creatures out there, in my opinion. I love eating them, I love being around them, and I love watching them. And that was really cool. I'm gonna see some comments below on what you guys thought of that. I'm gonna cruise around this little point to see if we can see the rest of this herd, but we're losing daylight. I'm getting hungry. It's time to eat some food. Like it'll make a fantastic camp for the night. Found a beautiful sand beach right on the edge. Our island option definitely wasn't an option at all. So we did what we could, found a good spot. Let's get camp set up, get some dinner going, and get ready for a long night of fishing. So if you couldn't already tell everyone, there will be no tarpology tonight. There's no need for it. We're gonna lay out and sleep right under the stars. I'm almost done setting up the beds. I'm gonna get the grill going. And we have a delicious dinner in store for us tonight. We're doing a little bit of turf and one of my very, very favorite things to eat, it's a grilled Caesar salad. And no, not grilled chicken, grilled Caesar, which is a very fun recipe. You guys aren't gonna to wanna to miss this one. So let's get the rest of the stuff unloaded, get the grill going. My very favorite beer in the world. It's the Dreamsicle from Backwoods Brewing. Carson, Washington, big shout out to you guys for making a damn tasty beer. It's time to cook. First orders of business, rehydrating our morel mushrooms. And these are morel mushrooms I've picked in previous Stay Fishy videos, so if you guys didn't get to see those, go back in the log. And feel free to browse through and, and just binge watch all the videos. I love making these things for you guys, and some of the stuff that we've done this spring leading into the summer has been so much fun and such a neat experience for a lot of people who don't get to see stuff like this out there. So that's why I go make these videos, is so that I can share these experiences and share these beautiful places like this with people that might not ever get to see something like this. So these morels are going to make a very, very nice saute along with our pepper and our onions 
it's gonna go on top of our New York steaks and then the, uh, the salad of the hour, the romaine hearts, which is gonna make amazing grilled Caesar. So let's get the rest of our stuff cut up, get our grill going. The wild thing about these mushrooms is you see how nasty and dried up they are right now. They're actually really hard and brittle almost. And after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes sitting in this water, you are gonna be amazed by how these things come back to life. So we'll give those a little time, let them soak, let them come back to life, and we'll get everything else cut up. For our meats, we're gonna do a little short-term marinade, put a bit of Worcestershire sauce on there, give them a good rub down. Make sure to get both sides good and healthy. Ooh, I can hear the fish rolling out there already. We're gonna go a tiny bit of garlic and Parmesan seasoning. It's gonna go very nicely with this. Kind of that skunky Parmesan. A little bit of pepper on each side. Give those a few minutes to get to know themselves. Let's get the rest of our dish ready. Does that look good? Shut down. So the way these Caesars work, you guys, I'm gonna take this romaine heart, I'm gonna split it right down the middle, leaving that butt piece on there so that I have that structure to it. That's one piece. This one's a little bit bigger. Same idea though. Right down the piece, right down the middle, and peel them apart. Just like that. Go very light on your dressing. I'm gonna add just a nice Caesar dressing. This comes from the cold section. I like to use a higher quality Caesar. If you have the, the audacity to make it yourself, it's a very, very easy dressing to make at home. Go ahead and just look it up online. Really, it's just anchovies, a little bit of mayonnaise, a couple other different ingredients, and it tastes really good. So what we're gonna do here, just a real small amount in the bowl. And then we're gonna give them a little toss. I'll try to get that fully covered here. Get those things a good little coating of dressing on each side. Same with the other two pieces. Nice gentle coating. Not too much because we're actually going to add some uh, some more of this Caesar dressing to these heads of lettuce once they're actually done cooking and we cut them up. So. Okay, our mushrooms are back to life. And drain the water. Here we go. Okay, now that all that water's cooked down, I'm gonna add a good little helping of butter. Nice to my veggies. goes my grilled Caesars. So all we're looking for here with these Caesars is just a nice little char. You see how I got that little bit of blackened on each one of those sides. I'm gonna flip it over, get the same thing on this side, get that thing just a little more heat, and then we'll be ready to slice this thing up and add it to our bowl. Again, let's see how our steaks turned out. Oh wow, oh buttery juiciness. Here you go bud. Let's give it a try. Mm. Perfection. Slice those butts off. Add just a tiny bit more Caesar dressing. Dash of black pepper. Put the lime in the coconut and mix it all up. And we are ready to eat like a king.
dinner is served. What a beautiful plate with a beautiful view. Mm. Okay, we try the steak. Let's try it with a little pairing of the veggies. Off the charts. I gotta try the combo bite. What do you think of that bite right there, everyone? Mm. 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 Now for the real question is how's the salad? You can see it's got that nice wilt to it. Nice little char from the barbecue. Mm. If you guys have never tried any sort of wilted salad or barbecued salad, it goes well with any sort of recipe. I tried it a lot with like a taco salad or any sort of different recipe that you want to put those romaine hearts up on the grill. Give them that little char. Key is, is to put some oil or some dressing on them beforehand. Melt some char up really nicely and then you add whatever dressing you want and it makes a delicious meal. It is officially time for the real night bite. And this whole situation brings a whole new level to the term night bite because we're literally going out at night. Now, what we're doing here and why we're doing it is because out here on this lake, they have what we call a hexagena hatch. And these, this is a very interesting, very cool bug that only exists in these high mountain lakes and only hatches in the nighttime, which is exactly why we are going out to do this right now. So I got my red light on right now just so... I don't waste too much headlamp battery. I got one really good little night light thing that I have just in case we do hook a fish, but I'm gonna have my light off for the majority of the time we're fishing for these things. So bear with me here. Uh, I have a feeling this is gonna be a really, really cool experience. My first time actually being in this kayak in the middle of the night. So life jacket on for safety. I'm gonna switch up to a dry fly here on my line and uh, let's go see if we can get ourselves a literal night bite. Come on, bud, load up. Boy. Let's go. Oh, what do we have here? I don't know if you guys can see this, but instantly as I'm launching here, I don't know if you can see it for on the camera very well, but right here next to camp, two absolutely massive crawdads. Okay, I know what we're doing later. That thing is a giant. A literal giant. Holy crap. Uh yeah. I think so. I think I know exactly what we're doing tonight once we get back. But first first things first, let's try to catch some fish. Oh, there's another one right there. They're all over the place, everybody. There's another one right there. Okay, this is gonna be cool. But like I said, first things first, let's try to get ourselves a fish. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, everyone, we're gonna switch from the sinking fly that I have here on my line. Stick that on my, on my chest. And we're gonna go to, I don't have an exact hexagena uh, uh, fly itself, but these are pretty big bugs. So I'm gonna go with this guy right here. This is a golden stone fly. This is not exactly what these things are eating, but I have a feeling it's gonna be close enough. So let's get my scissors, snoop off my line, get this thing rigged up. And then we're gonna start casting towards the banks. Cause as we've been cooking dinner and eating here, I've been noticing these things feeding all along the side of the bank, like right, right close to the bank, close to camp. So that's telling me that I think these hexagenas are hatching in these areas that are pretty damn close to the bank. So I'm going to, I'm going to take what I've seen and run with it. And we got just a little bit of twilight here. I'm going to turn my headlamp off once we really start fishing and um, see, see what we can make happen. Oh, just had one roll right next to me here on the bank. I can hear fish rolling all over the place, everyone. Oh my God, I just had one take the fly. Just had one take the fly. Just getting started here and I already had a bite. That was cool. That was cool. Once again, this is all just totally by sight and sound. I'm kind of just looking for that splash, listening really closely to hear uh, if this, something is biting right next to where I think my line is, but obviously, as you guys can see, it's pitch freaking black. I can't see a damn thing. 
So what I think I'm gonna do here, I wanna cast this thing kind of with the bank and I'm just gonna slowly drift with the current here. The wind is just so ever so slightly blowing me down the bank. So I'm just gonna let that thing sit. I was moving that fly when I got bit just now. So I don't know how much of that those fish are seeing. A lot of this is done by the moonlight too and the moon has not come up yet. So not really sure what to expect. I think next time I'm just really not gonna set the hook because I set the hook immediately after hearing that splash on my fly. So we'll see. Such a beautiful night. Oh, just had one bite. Just had one on. Just had another one smash the bug in the dark. Damn it. The truth of it is, is these things are hunting. So I'm wondering how much I shouldn't move around, how much I should like just stay and let the current go with me. Um, but it's all learning curve here. I've never, ever done this before. Never even experienced anything like this. So this is just the weirdest thing ever. We got the sun still setting over on the side. We got bugs smashing my freaking fly over here. And I do not know what to do with my hands. And so a couple bites in and as I'm starting to troll here, I just turned my light on and was checking it out. I'm just kind of trolling back up to the upward branch side. You guys can see the carcasses of these hexagenas. These are the, the, the nymph stage of these things. You can see their wings and stuff up on the surface. That's, those are, I, I believe, the ones that are getting eaten, the wings. But you can see all these little shells, basically, of, of the, the bodies that these things have shed off. So they're definitely hatching. There's definitely something going on out here. There's definitely a hatch underway. I'm seeing wings everywhere. I'm hearing fish jump. All I can do is, is start back up wind again. I got all my bites right here in front of camp. So I'm gonna keep trolling around in a circle, keep checking it out. Like I said, there's tons of signs of these bugs hatching right now. So with any luck, we'll have one on our line here soon enough. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit of a change up here. Something I'm not sure my, my bug is actually floating very well back there. So I'm gonna go with what they call a waker. This isn't exactly the pattern of a hexagena, but it's got the big wings. It's got a big piece of foam on here that'll keep it on the surface. That way, as I'm doing my little troll session around in the circle here, um, I, I can ensure that my bug's up on the surface of the water. Had a couple really good bites to start off with. Not really sure what it was or how big a fish that they were. Um, but all I know is I want to make sure that my bug is floating behind me and with it being dark like this and using this elk hair pattern that I have on right now I can't really be certain that I'm staying up on the surface so one thing I must say so far that I'm enjoying is the pure serenity of fishing in the middle of the night like this this is something I've never tried before and I've always wanted to like I said it was 95 degrees today so a lot of times these these fish really go on the feed at night and in terms of this hexagena hatch these things are feeding in the middle of the night because it's when these bugs are actually hatching out of the water so as you can see as i've already showed you all those things floating around i'm up on the surface good but you know what in the name of science and staying fishy let's make a bug change Oh my God. Well, we've been out here for about an hour now. And ever since we've really lost that twilight or that sunset, the bite has really gone off. I'm not hearing as many fish splashing. I'm not seeing as much commotion on the surface. So I'm wondering if we're gonna have to wait for that moon to come up. Cause as of now, it is completely pitch black out here. I've kind of lost camp to tell you the truth. So I'm gonna have to turn my headlamp back on, on full blast so I can kind of find where the hell we are. Oh, we're in the bushes. Yeah, in the bushes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but it looks like everything's going to be okay. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to head back to camp, go on a little adventure. This adventure is going to be very fun, I can already tell. Uh, and maybe wait for that moonlight to start coming back out because as it stands now, I'm not seeing a whole lot of fish activity on the surface anymore. Um, like we did right there at the very beginning where we started getting those first bites. So back to camp, on to an adventure. Oh my gosh, everybody, I don't know if you can see this, but there's crawdads up the wazoo. I think this is going to be all, our alternative plan to feed ourselves here. Not that we could keep any of these fish that we're fishing for, but all I have to say is there's one there. There's one there. There's one there. They are everywhere. So let's grab the flashlight. Let's hit the bank. 
Let's see how many crawdads we can find for breakfast. Okay, and the hunt begins. Let's find us some crawdads. Daddy number one in our pan. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. He's on the run, he's on the run. Daddy number one in the pan. Ooh, there's a good one. There's a real good one. Trying to sneak up on him. Oh. Oh. Missed him. Missed him. Where'd he go? Dang it. That was. Oh, there he is. There is a good one. Oh wow. Look at the. Look at the claws on that one. Oh. Sh Come on back. Dang it. You gotta be quicker than that. Gotta be quicker than that. That was a good one too. Oh, there's a big one. There's a big one. There is a big one. Oh yeah, he's pinned up against the rock. Got him. Got him. In the pan. Oh yeah, he almost got me too. That one was a fighter. Daddy number two, and that one's a hog daddy. Right there. Got him. Ah, he got me! He got me back, he got revenge. He's a real wily bastard. Three. Okay, what I'm thinking is maybe we'll throw a couple things in the water, a little bit of food waste. After I had just cleaned off some of the dishes uh, from dinner in the water here, I think that's what attracted a lot of these things in. So let's set these things down, maybe do a couple more dishes in the water and see if more of them attract into us. Okay, I just had the best idea. And I don't really have anything for bait. I don't wanna waste any of the food that we do have for the morning uh, and for tomorrow. So but what will work just as well some butter super oily we'll put off a great scent trail and we'll actually get those crawdads i think pretty riled up i've never tried this before so this is going to be our bait this is how we're going to lure these things in oh there's already a big one right there oh oh my god there's an even bigger one he ain't going nowhere either so what i'm going to do i'm just going to toss the butter in oh god it floats <laughs> Total backfire. Lobster size one. Oh my God, look at the size of that guy. That's a big old ball dragger right there. Throw him in the pan. Man, that thing is giant. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna take the butter, find a nice, nice little rock here. Something that I can put it under. I'm gonna stick the butter right underneath the edge of the rock here. And hopefully, hopefully that will do the trick and start tracking these things in. Once that dust kind of settles, we should have ourselves a whole pile of crawdads. Oh, they're everywhere. There's another really big one. Coming out of the woodwork, ladies and gentlemen. Out of the woodwork. Come and snug bug. Come on. You know you want to. Come on, a snug bug. Whatever. Well, it's been an adventurous day, to say the least. We caught a bunch of crawdads. The butter bait worked. Now it's time to get some shut eye. Till the morning, everybody. Good cup of joe.
Okay, time for breakfast, everybody. And today's menu is a crawdad scramble. Look at the color of these beautiful things. Come out red like a lobster. I poured a little cold water on them to get them to cool down a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take and shell each one of them. Try to get as much meat out of them as I possibly can. I like to twist that tail. Usually that meat pulls right out just like that. Beautiful. Give it a try. Crawd has scramble. My first try. What do you think it tastes like? Yum. That crawd, it almost reminds me of like a like a uh, Dungeness crab Benedict. And if you guys have ever had that, it's delicious. You do poached eggs, Dungeness crab on top of a little piece of English muffin. This is a little more country if you ask me, but delicious all the same. Mmm. Great way to start the day. Well, everyone, what a grand adventure this has been. I want to thank you all so much for being here this week on Stay Fishy. So until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there. <laughs>